Good morning, boys and girls. For today's math lesson, you are going to need your whiteboard marker, eraser, and your little whiteboard wipe off paper thing. So pause the video if you need to gather those materials. Welcome back, guys. Okay, so today for our math lesson, we're going to be talking about using area models, finding the area for area models, in fact. Now, the only difference between the type of figures or the type of shapes we're talking about today and the ones we were talking about yesterday is that an area model is simply just a perfect rectangle or perfect square, okay? Yesterday's exit ticket and today's exit ticket was not an area model. And the only reason is because yesterday's exit ticket, our shape looked like this. Do you see how it has that extra little square unit sticking out of it, right? Well, for area models, they do not have those little extra square units sticking out in kind of weird places or anything like that, you know, like this. So an area model is just a perfect rectangle or perfect square. And so we're going to start with a rectangle on our board. So go ahead and draw a rectangle, and it, I don't care which way it's going, and let's divide it into four equal parts. We'll divide it in half and we'll divide it into four equal parts. Now counting this area model, I see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units. So my area, and let's write this, area equals eight square, and I'm going to abbreviate the word square by writing SQ, units. And I found that out by simply just counting, right? I counted all the square units on the inside of this shape. But there is also another way to do it, and you actually already know it as an array. Remember when we learned about arrays? This is an array, and if I were to magically smash it all together, it would look like this rectangle. Because there are four rows, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, with two boxes in each row. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's the exact same thing. It's just one is apart and one is put together. So this array is the same thing as this area model. And you can count the squares on the inside, or you can easily do this. <clears throat> there are one, two, three, four rows, and there's one, two boxes in each. There are one, two, three, four rows, and there's one, two boxes in each. See how they're exactly the same? Four times two and four times two. And boys and girls, so easy. What is four times two? It's eight, right? Eight, which is our answer to our area problem. Eight square units. So you could easily count up all the squares, or you can just simply make a multiplication problem and figure out what the area is without having to count all those teensy tiny little squares. So let's try another one. Let's erase our board. And let's draw a really big rectangle this time. So let's see, I'm gonna erase, erase. Here we go. Let's draw a big rectangle. And I'm gonna divide it into four rows. One, two, three, four. So because I know I'm dividing it into four rows, I'm automatically just going to write four because it's four rows times however many square units I'm going to put in each row. 
Let's just go and see how many fit in here. Let's see, there's one, two, keep drawing with your boys and girls, three, four, five. Okay, I drew my rectangle and it has one, two, three, four, five, six squares in each. So automatically I know that my multiplication problem for this area model is four times six. Remember, there are one, two, three, four rows with one, two, three, four, five, six squares in each. I don't even have to count the rest of these. Don't even waste your time. Because once you solve four times six, you're gonna find out how many squares there, square units there are in all of this area model. So what is four times six? You're right, it's 24, right? 24 square units. And just to make sure that there really are 24 square units, let's count it all up to see if there really are 24 squares in this area model. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. There were 24. And we found it in a much faster way instead of having to count every single one of those squares. So let's try another one. It's easy, right? Let's try another. Just like an array. Another big rectangle, you guys. Let's draw a big rectangle again. And to get myself ready, I'm automatically just going to set up my multiplication problem so that I can solve the area for, the, for this uh, area model. So let's see how many rows are in this air, area model. I'm going to draw one, two, three. <clears throat> let's see. How many rows was that? <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. Make sure you have five on your board. There are five rows. Great. Now let's see how many of these lines I can fit going up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, uh, let's do it. Here we go. I have five rows. Remember, there are five rows. One, two, three, four, five rows. And how many square units are inside of just the row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So my multiplication equation is going to be five times nine. Again, solving for area for this area model is so much easier and faster when we just set up a multiplication equation to go with it. Remember, it's an array. Just count up how many rows and how many square units are inside of one of those rows. That's all you have to do is just count one row of squares. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So five times nine is our equation. And what is five times nine? So that we don't have to count every single box. <laughs> It's 45, right? So it's 45 what? Square units. Very good. Square units. And instead of having to count every single one of these, we use that multiplication equation to solve. Now, easy, right? So easy. So what I'm going to do is to do one more for good measure. You are not going to draw the area model that I'm going to draw. All you're going to do is just write the multiplication equation that goes with that area model. Okay, so all you're going to have on your board is just this. Blank times blank equals blank square units. You might as well practice writing the unit of measurement. Okay. I, however, am going to draw the area model 
and I'll give you a moment, you might want to pause the video, I'll give you a moment to solve it on your own. Let's see what you got as your answer. Okay, did you count how many rows there were? <laughs> Good, because I'm going to do this part. Okay, remember, easier way to solve is to just count how many rows, write it here, count how many square units are in one of those rows and put that number here. Take a moment to solve. So boys and girls, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So it's going to be six times how many square units in a row. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It'll be six times nine. And six times nine is 54. The area for this area model is 54 square units. Nice job. So instead of having to count all the square units, we just multiply. We got area so quick and so easy. That was easy, right guys? Okay, let's put that aside for now. And if you need to, grab your math packet if you don't have it. Let me show you how to do your math work for today. So in your math packet, can you believe it? We did all this work already. We're on the last page of our math packet, lesson 11.6, and we're using the, these area models to find out what the area is. They've already done number one for us. There are three rows of eight unit squares, so the multiplication equation is three times eight, which equals 24. Area equals 24 square units. So you're gonna do all of that for numbers two through five, and most likely for numbers six and seven on the bottom. So let's just take a look at number two, easy. Let's see, find the area of each shape. Each unit square is one square foot, okay? So there are how many rows? One, two, three, four times one, two, three, four square units. So four times four equals 16, right? Our area equals 16 square. And remember, it's one square foot is each one of these little squares. So we write square feet for all of them. Okay, continue on doing number three, four, and five. Ooh, this time, it's a square meter. So for number three, there's how many rows? Right, one, two, super easy. So it'll be two times. Let's count the square meters in each, in one row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the equation is two times six, which equals 12. Area equals 12 square meters. Okay, make sure you read those directions carefully to know what the measurement, unit of measurement is. Now for the back, very interesting. I left you with just a giant grid like this with no directions, except I'm gonna give you the directions right here. On the back of this paper, you are going to either write your first name, your last name, your full name, or your initials. And you're going to use it by doing just square units. So you can get creative, you can use markers, you can use crayons. I think I am going to write just my last name, just my last name. I was thinking about doing SS for Sasha Santos, but I'm going to do Santos. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the squares to write my name. So here's my S, and there's no really right or wrong way to do it. You can make your name as big as you want. You can use as many squares as you want, but this, these are the number of squares I'm going to use. 
There's my S, if you can see it, and if not, I'm going to color it too. So like I said, you can use your crayons, colored pencils, markers, whatever you want on hand to write your name. So there's my S, and you're going to do a much better job of coloring than I am. And I think I might do every letter in a different color. A is a little difficult, so I have to do, I have to imagine it, not... There we go. And I'm going to make a little long, longer line there. I hope Santos fits. I don't know. S A. Uh, let's do N. Oops. It might just help. It might just work with your initials, boys and girls, but I wanted to do my last name, of course, so now I'm stuck in my last name. There's the N. Can you see it? T. And if you run out of space, it's no big deal. Just go to the bottom and finish off the rest of your name. I say N T O. And of course, I would write the letter S, right? So after you're done writing your name using just the square units, okay, you can't curve any of these lines. You have to kind of make it look like a block letter. So once you're done, you know, and you filled it in and stuff, I want you to find the area and perimeter of your name. I know, right, that you need to find the area and perimeter of your name. And I think the best way to do this is to add up all the areas first. So like for here, I have area of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the area here equals 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The area here equals 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The area here equals 8, and I'm going to go all the way to every single letter in my name, and then I'm going to add up all those numbers to figure out how much the area is all together. And right at the top here, you can write area equals blank. Perimeter, you're going to do the same thing. So for perimeter, you're going to add up all the perimeters from each one of the letters of your name. So starting with S, let's see, I have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Whoo, the perimeter here is 24 on my first letter of my name. When I go over here, I'm going to write P for perimeter. I'm going to start on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And don't forget to add up in the middle if you have any of these letters like this, A and O. 15, 16, 17, 18. So my perimeter is 18. And you're going to keep on going to every single letter. And you're going to add up all the perimeters to get the total perimeter. And that's it. I would love, you know what, if you have the opportunity, boys and girls, to take a picture of your finished name and put it on Google Classroom, post it on Google Classroom, please do so because this is going to look really, really cool. All right, guys, that's it for today. Have fun with this one. I can't wait to see um, some names on our Google Classroom if you get a chance to do it. Um, if, if you don't get to take a picture and post it on Google Classroom, it's okay. All right? Have a great day, boys and girls, and I told you it was going to be super easy area model.